Hello, I'm Brad Zanders with the Subside Electronics Product Support Group, and today what I want to talk to you about is how we would connect any one of our TK series trackers to one of our configurable beacons. Um, what do I mean by the term configurable? A configurable beacon is simply one of our beacons that we can connect to via Bluetooth from the tracker to the beacon and set it up with different frequencies and the different power outputs of those frequencies so we'll have access to those while we're drilling down hole. Okay, so let's talk for a minute about some of the benefits of using a configurable beacon. Obviously, we have different frequencies in the beacon that we have access to while we're on the job site. So the four base, basic frequencies I want to talk to you about are 29 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, um, 12, and 1.5 kilohertz. Now, a common question I get is, what are these frequencies best for? Your higher frequencies, such as 29 and 20, typically work best around what we call active types of interference. So active types of interference are electrical in the area that's around you, whether it be overhead power, uh, whether it's underground, whether you're paralleling a cathodic protected gas line, uh, those are active types of interference. Any other signal that can interfere with the beacon, the tracker communication. Now your lower frequency, 12 kilohertz um, and 1.5 kilohertz, those work best around what we call passive types of interference. Those are uh, concrete with, with rebar, uh, wire mesh inside of those, uh, metal culverts, fences you might be nearby, anything uh, that could distort again the signal from the beacon to the tracker or affect your depth estimates. So those are what it, the four frequencies are for. Also with a configurable beacon we can control the power output of that beacon. And there's three basic power outputs we have. We have what we call a B or a low output, which is best used for your shallower bores. Typically that's anything I call 20 foot or less. I would use the, the beacon in the low or the B output. Then we have what we call the high uh, or H output. That's an output when you need a little bit more power, you're gonna start getting into deeper bores, things deeper than 20 foot. Um, and you also have maybe a high noise uh, uh, noise area in your, on your job site and you need a little bit more signal. Um, then we also have what we call the X or the extreme output. X or extreme output is going to give you the ability to go as deep as we can go. It's going to give you about 5 to 10 percent more output than what the H output would. Uh, one of the things I would recommend or caution you that if you are going to be using a beacon in the X output you want to make sure you have a lithium battery in them. Uh, the lithium battery is going to give you that prolonged battery life. Uh, in any other situations, whether it's the H or the B output, make sure you're at least using what we call our power sticks in the, in the beacon. Okay, now a couple other common questions I get are um, customers want to know how often do I have to connect the tracker to the beacon and configure it or set it up? The answer is you don't have to connect to it ever again if you don't want to. If you like the initial setup the way you've made it, you like the two frequencies you've chosen and their power outputs, you don't have to connect to the beacon again unless you see it necessary because of interference on the job. So, but one of the advantages I would tell you that it, to connect the tracker to the beacon is each time you go down a hole for calibration purposes. Um, that speeds up the process actually. If you're Bluetooth connected from the tracker to the beacon, say after you did an initial setup or configuration of the beacon, um, it'll actually calibrate the tracker, will calibrate both frequencies for you in that process, um, what we call a connected calibration, um, which is critical because you gotta have obviously both frequencies calibrated so your depth estimates will be correct. Um, if you don't do a, a connected calibration, you have to connect each frequency individually, so powering the beacon off and back on and then uh, switching the tracker into appropriate frequency to calibrate. So that'd be the main advantage there to connecting. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about for a second is what the terms up and down modes mean. And up and down mode is simply a way for the user to remember what frequencies the beacon are set to while they're drilling. Um, one way is when you're, when you're looking at your tracker down in the bottom left hand corner, whatever frequency you're in, whether it be 12K or 29K, you'll see an up arrow next to it or a down arrow. That's obviously telling you that's in its up mode or it's down mode. So there's two different ways we switch the frequency on this beacon, okay, on a configurable beacon. The first way is if we have it in our hand like this. If I'm holding the beacon vertically, 
Um, so obviously this would be if we were fixing to start a bore. If I'm holding the beacon vertical with the battery tube down and I put a battery in the tube, put the cap on, this beacon is now gonna power up in what we've established as our up mode. If I was to turn the beacon vertically with the battery tube up, put a battery in, put the cap on, it's now gonna power up in what we call our down mode. So remember that. The other way that we would switch frequencies uh, on this beacon is obviously when we're down hole drilling. Um, if you park this beacon at five o'clock and each tracker on the clock face has a quick sleep indicator, typically it's at five o'clock. Uh, if you happen to have calibrated the roll on a tracker, it may change to a different clock position. But if you'll just remember uh, five at five, what that's telling you is if you roll this beacon to five o'clock, within five minutes, the beacon's gonna go to sleep. You'll notice the signal strength on your tracker uh, will go from whatever number it's at to zero. As soon as you see that, the beacon shut off and is now asleep. At that point, you have 60 seconds to roll the beacon again and wake it back up. If you go past 60 seconds, what's gonna happen is the beacon will wake back up in the frequency or the mode that it was in when it went to sleep. So once you've rolled it within 60 seconds, the beacon will then switch frequencies or to its other mode. Then all you have to do is go into the tracker menu system, go to beacon, go to frequency, and then select the appropriate frequencies that you've chosen. Okay, now I'd like to just go ahead and demo um, the connection and configuration process. So you see here, I've got a tracker turned on. I have a beacon nearby. Uh, it's three foot, eight inches away. One of the common questions I get is how close do I have to be to the beacon? Uh, I've configured beacons uh, at the 10 foot calibration mark. So uh, if you have any issues connecting via Bluetooth, uh, just simply move a little closer. It's not a big deal. Then you can move back out when you're ready to calibrate. First thing before you try to connect is make sure you got good beacon signal, uh, good information. So meaning looking at your status bars here, make sure you've got five of them. They're all filled in. Uh, good pitch, good roll good signal strength. The other thing I'll point out is you can see the beacon's currently set up in 29K with the up arrow. Uh, that's its up mode. So uh, we're ready to connect and configure now. If you just hit the menu button, you're gonna scroll down to beacon, select that. Then you're gonna go to configuration, select that. First thing you're gonna see is the tracker scanning for the beacon. It's already found the beacon we're looking for, which is TX, and then it'll have four digits there. That's typically the last four digits of the serial number of your beacon. Uh, it could be a different number depending on if you've had a new module or lower assembly placed in the beacon at any point. Uh, the next thing you're gonna look for is over here on the right-hand side, there's a status bar. Typically those bars, there's four of them, but usually three of the bars will be filled in. And then there's a numeric value there. What's important about that numeric value is if when you first see the beacon, if it's like at a minus 128 or a minus 90, you wanna wait till that number drops significantly. Like right now, it's down at 77, it was at 75. You may see that number bump up or down, but what's important is to remember, don't try to connect um, until you see it at a lower number. So we should be ready to connect here. Um, one other thing I'll mention quickly, you possibly may see some other devices pop up here from time to time. Typically, it's a mobile device that's nearby. Uh, it could be your cell phone in your pocket or something like that. So just make sure you've highlighted the unit you want to connect to. So you're going to hit the connect key. Shows it's connecting. Shows we're connected. The first thing I want to point out is you're at the beacon menu screen, basically. So it tells you the serial number of the beacon, uh, high temperature. That's actually the max temperature this beacon's seen. Uh, the current software version, uh, the actual runtime hours on the beacon, and then how it's currently set up, what its up mode and current down mode is. Right now it's in 29H and 29B. So let's go ahead and set modes. If I select there, it's asking me, what do you want to make your up frequency or your up mode? Um, let's go ahead and change it to 20K. So I would scroll down, select it. Now it's asking me for the power output. Uh, we're going to be on a shallow bore here, so let's move up and let's select the B or the low output. Now it's asking me what I want to make my down frequency or my down mode. We're going to make it 12K. What do I want the power to be on that? 
let's say we're going to use uh, B again. So make sure it's highlighted, select it. Now, another common question I get is what's initial mode mean? Initial mode is simply what do you want to start the bore in? Because what will happen, I want to start it in 20K. So what will happen is when I select that, the tracker will go to 12K first when it calibrates and then it will calibrate 20K second. So when you're finished with your calibration process, you'll be ready to start the job. So I'm gonna select the up arrow for my initial mode for 20K. It's gonna show that its uh, settings are sent. Now one thing I want you to double check, you're actually ready to go calibrate here, but if you'll back out, hit the menu button, back out to the main walkover screen. One of the things you'll see here and notice See the little Bluetooth icon in the bottom menu bar now? That lets you know, hey, I'm connected via Bluetooth and I can do a connected calibration, which I talked about earlier uh, in the video. So at this point, I could go to the menu, go to Beacon, go to Calibrate, and I'd be ready to calibrate my tracker to the Beacon and it will calibrate both frequencies. Okay, hopefully you found that video beneficial. If you have any more further questions, I'd encourage you to contact your local dealer. Uh, they can assist you as well. Uh, you're welcome to always contact Subside Electronics Product Support Group and we'd be more than happy to help you. Uh, also, don't forget about checking out other videos on the Subside Electronics YouTube page.